You know, one thing I'm noticing right now is this is so boring. It is Sunday, November 8th, 2020, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, I'm gonna tell you about the one cruise ship that I've been on that I promise you I will never cruise on again. Well, hello, November 8th. Uh, for anybody who might be watching this like several years in the future, I just wanna let you know that, you know, there's nothing exciting happening in the world right now. We're all totally bored. Everything everywhere is just business as usual. Nothing special happening. <laughs> I've totally been stress eating, and as I said in my video on Friday, I've also not been saying no to an extra glass of wine at night, so I'm kind of feeling it. And I had the craziest dream last night. I dreamt I was in a gigantic hardware store, and I was there to film something, and I had to be someplace really quickly afterwards, and I was so hungry, but I didn't have anything to eat, so I ate my camera lens. So yeah, if you're thinking, I wonder how Morgan's doing. That's how I'm doing. I'm dreaming about eating camera lenses. Today, we are going to once again take a trip back in time to my very first cruise. And anybody who's been around here for a while now will be like, okay, now I get it. I said that I will never cruise with the ship again. And the thing is, is that the ship does not exist anymore. It was the Monarch of the Seas, which was at the time sailing for Royal Caribbean. It was sold a few years later to Pullman Tour and uh, sailed, still called the Monarch, but for sort of a different brand. And now it has been scrapped and dismantled. You can see pictures of it and videos of it sort of being being run aground, I think, in Turkey. And yeah, I will never be cruising on that ship again. And I mean, it was an old ship. And this video is the very first cruise video that I ever posted on the very unofficial travel guides. And I wanted to ask you all, who has been here since then? This was uploaded exactly 10 years ago. So November 8th, 2010. And I'm really curious to look at this again because I, I have not looked at this in a long, long time. And I don't remember exactly what it was I talked about or how I was feeling. It seems like a really long time ago now. Anyways, let's get into it. Morgan O'Brien here. Back <laughs> wow. Who is that child? Like, imagine that there's no hair on my chest. I look like I'm 14. I think it's mostly, well, of course, you know, I didn't have any uh, facial hair and I didn't have, you know, I did have gray hairs, but not as many as I have now. But I'm also like 15, if not maybe 20 pounds lighter. This was at the very end of my professional career on stage. And the show that I was doing right before we went on this cruise, I had been, I was doing it for 14 months, eight shows a week, and it was a really hard, a really uh, intense dance show, and it's an original German musical. Anybody who's watching this in Germany, it was Ifano Nimaz in New York here in Hamburg. And I was like in shape. I was fit and thin and yeah, I mean, so compare that face to this face. This is what 10 years and like 15 pounds will do to you. And with another very unofficial guide, this time we're on a Caribbean cruise with Royal Caribbean on uh, the Monarch of the Seas. Oh, do you guys remember this intro? This is a, this was the very first intro that I created. And of course now I've got a new intro, which I'm really happy about, but oh gosh, I look so much younger. First impressions. <laughs> I look like a child. Oh. All right. Let me just stop it right here. Uh, first of all, I still have that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Those glasses I don't have anymore. They broke actually. I broke them at the swimming pool and I was filming this with my older Canon camera. I have a newer Canon camera now and I feel like it has, it has kind of a fish eye effect. Like it seems to me like my eyes look really far apart here. I don't know if that's just because now there's more 
cheeks outside of my eyes. I don't know. But also what I wanted to say is I can already tell that on the way to the ship, I remember taking the maximum dose of seasickness medication because like I said, I had never been on a cruise before and I was so worried about getting seasick. And I can tell that, like I said in, an, in a different recent video, that I look kind of stoned. So we went and did a little bit of looking around in the airport and we just happened to walk past somebody holding a Monarch of the Seas folder and we talked to him. Do you guys know what I mean? Like I'm like, so we were walking through the airport and I just happened to notice it's, it's because of two things. One is because of the drowsiness from the motion sickness medication and the other one is why, is because at this time, I was still trying to sort of seem like a, like a legit travel reporter, which I'm so glad that I stopped doing that. He didn't even stop walking to listen to our questions. He just kept walking. And when I told him that we were Remember this now. to find the transportation to the ship, he kept walking, but told us to follow him. We followed him through the airport and, uh, yeah, he took us to the shuttle and then, uh, as we are putting on our suitcases on the bus, the bus driver already uh, begged us for a tip. And then uh, we got on the bus and then they told us that the bathroom isn't working, so we got back off the bus to go to the bathroom because we got directly off the plane and you know, didn't take any uh, time to take care of that. But then, yeah, so then they rushed us on the bus and I guess we're the last two people that they're waiting for, which is weird because they had absolutely no idea that we were coming. They called us walk-ons, even though we had a reservation and a ticket. So I'm curious to see how that's going to affect us getting on the boat. But uh, yeah, and then as the bus uh, drove uh, away from the airport, the bus driver then turned on the loudspeaker and begged us all again for a tip. Well, he reminded us that we should give him a tip. So that's my first impression. Uh, we're on the bus on our way to the ship, and although it's a very comfortable bus, I don't have a very good first impression of this experience. Let's see if it gets better. All right, we had just flown from Hamburg to Orlando, so I'm, I'm on motion sickness medication, I'm jet lagged. I guess I was just kind of grumpy, but the thing is, is we had booked the transportation with the cruise, and, and I had checked it and double checked it, and they said when you go to the baggage claim, there's gonna be people standing there with signs for Royal Caribbean, you talk to them. And I remember that we got there and we couldn't find anybody. And like uh, like little boy Morgan said here, finally, after walking through several parts of the airport, we found somebody who's like, well, you know, you can come on my bus, but I don't have any registration of you. And then when we walked out of the airport, there was another guy standing next to the bus who just basically, took our bags and put it under the bus. And then he was like, then we got on the bus and the bus driver's like, so we're on our way to the cruise uh, port. And I just want to remind you that we appreciate your tips. And so, yeah, I was just not having it. I guess I was really expecting more of like the Disney Magical Express treatment and it definitely was not that. So, but let's see what happens when we get to the ship. Oh, good. This is my first cruise. I've never done a cruise before or uh, never a cruise like this. Uh, so I am a virgin cruiser and <laughs> these are only uh, yeah, like first time cruiser experiences. I don't claim to be. I'm laughing right now because there's something about that. That clip that I just showed you of the people dancing at the sail away party. It's an inside joke between Marcus and I. And unfortunately it's very insulting. <laughs> so I'm not gonna tell you what it is. But it just popped up in my head and it really made me laugh. So this is us sailing away from Port Canaveral, which is like outside of Orlando, looking south. An expert or necessarily have Windy. any fantastic tips because like I said, this is only the first time I've done this. But I talked with a lot of other very experienced cruises before I went out on this journey. So maybe I do have a little bit of insight. Anyways, this is our first day and after a bad first impression of uh, yeah, basically running through the airport following the um, shuttle bus uh, attendant or whatever. Trying so hard to, to keep my thoughts together. Or hardly go to the bathroom. We got on the shuttle bus and got to the boat. And then when you arrive at the port, 
you have to check in basically. So either you print out your check-in stuff at home, or you print in, in or you check in in the uh, terminal, which is what we had to do. So you need your passport or your birth certificate and your uh, documents for the cruise. Uh, it's sort of like going to um, going in for a flight, except you go through security before you get your tickets and your room keys and stuff like that. You know, one thing I'm noticing right now is this is so boring. This is so boring. Like, I'm interested in what's happening, but already, like, if I didn't know me, I would have definitely clicked away by now. The security is not as lax or not as uh, strict as at an airport. We didn't have to take off our shoes or our belts or anything like that. They just wanted to basically look in our bags and uh, we had to take off the laptops and stuff like that. Then you get your, um, I guess this is called a, a seat pass. Yeah, seat pass. Kind of like your uh, room key and... Uh, I still have that, by the way. When you go to I still have all of mine. So you guys this, do too, you don't you? You can charge basically anything on the ship to your room. And you don't have to think about cash or having cash with you. And it's also your room key and has uh, useful information on it, like what station you have to go to for the uh, security drill and um, when your dining room time is and what dining room you're in and what table you're at. And there's other numbers on here. I don't know exactly what they mean. Then when you get to your room, you have all this information. This is for tomorrow. I guess it doesn't matter. So you get all this information about um, where you are that day and what's happening, a nice weather forecast, a uh, little bit of um, history and culture about your I am absolutely not engaging at all, am I? Jeez. And then there is, uh, also, I'm happy to say that I. Uh, it's uh, obvious that even to me that I've gotten much better at this. A list of everything that's happening today on the ship, the times, if it costs more, and uh, who it's for, and what kind of entertainment or seminar or whatever it is. And then there was also, in the other thing I got, there is like a checklist, so you can sort of decide, you can read it all up and decide what it is you want to do that day, and then make a checklist so you don't have to, um, I don't know, write it down or whatever. So yeah, check out this useful information in the room, and every day you get a new one about the day, the next day. So the night before you can read up where you're going and what it is you want to do. And tomorrow we are going to be in Nassau in the Bahamas. So uh, yeah, that's tomorrow. That's it? That's the whole video? <laughs> wow. You know, I, I think I talked about this last week too, that at this time, like in the in the information that you could find online about how to be successful on YouTube, all the information said, don't post videos longer than like six or seven minutes because nobody watches them. And that has changed so much. That seems so short. That was me. That was like a vlog of the first day of the cruise of like traveling from the airport to the ship and then the first day on the ship. And I mean, you guys know what it's like to watch a video like that now. I mean, my video or, you know, whoever else's uh, daily videos when they're cruising, so different. And if you look at the cabin here, look at the colors. Just, I mean, even for then, this is only 10 years ago, even then kind of outdated. And I think it was time to retire that ship or do like a major, major overhaul of it. But I don't think, yeah, it's probably better to just invest money in a new ship and that's why they couldn't find a buyer or probably didn't even try to sell it. Or, you know, I bet they sold it for scrap is probably what they did, right? Right. All right, I have something else really new I wanna to talk to you guys about and I'm gonna do it right after this commercial break. Did you get one? Aren't you happy it's not about politics or the election anymore? Okay, most of you will know that this channel is funded basically by you. It's funded by the viewers, by clicking on the videos, by a lot of really generous, cool people who support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash very unofficial. It's a website where you can sign up and then you get access to things that I don't talk about or don't post on YouTube. You guys also know that I have a merchandise store that I know I don't talk about enough. It has a really long name. The link is in the description below the video. It's on Teespring and I sell t-shirts and towels and telephone cases with my logo and also with some funny sayings. I think it 
to go on my cruise, but I still gained 15 pounds. Thanks, Corona. And I know a lot of you have those too, and these are all ways that you can help support what I do, and I'm so, so thankful for every single one of them. And I've talked about this recently before as well, that I've been doing a lot of research and watching a lot of other YouTubers that I really like, and I've noticed the really big travel YouTubers that I enjoy watching, most of them start every video with, this video is being sponsored by Squarespace. We're so happy to have Squarespace as our sponsor. With Squarespace, you can set up a website and it runs in the background and it's so convenient. And it's just become part of YouTube that you listen to these people talk about their sponsors and then you also watch the ads. And I know, that's just how it is and just to get this out there in the beginning, I'm not doing that. I'm not about to announce a sponsor. However, Christmas is coming up. Literally, you guys, it's time to start thinking about Christmas, thinking about what you want and also what you might wanna get for the people you love. And so what I've done is I've set up a list of 12 things, only 12, and I'm gonna start linking them below every video I upload now. And what they are is their Amazon affiliate links. So they're for things that I use, that I know and can recommend, for instance, like my camera, this microphone, GoPro, my backpack, my luggage, also things I enjoy using, like Disney World Monopoly. I'm looking at it, it's right over here on the shelf. Cards Against Disney, which is a really raunchy Disney word game. Do not play it with your children. A pair of cool looking Speedo water shoes so you don't cut your foot open like I did. And a couple other things. And like I said, they're all things that I either wish I had or that I have and use and can recommend and maybe even answer questions if you're unsure if you wanna get it for yourself or if you wanna get it for somebody else. And the thing with these affiliate links is if you go to the description of the video and look at this list and you think, yes, I wanna get that for my son. If you purchase it through Amazon using that link, I get a tiny little bit of a kickback, kick, kick, kickback. And I decided to do this now rather than use a big sponsor because, like I said, Christmas is coming up and a lot of these things might be things that you are thinking of getting for somebody anyways. So please check those out. And if there's something on the list that you think you might wanna get for somebody else, then please use one of the links. And if there's something that you want somebody to get you, then send them the link and explain to them that you, you know, that if they do get it for you, that it would be helpful to somebody that you care about to use that link. Okay? Okay, that's it. But now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. And just a little bit of insider information, by the way, I've been doing some research about these sponsorship deals and stuff like that, and there are sites like Squarespace where you can sign up as an affiliate and you can make a lot of money with those things. Like if I was you know, to use Squarespace now, I think with their affiliate program, if I get one person to sign up for the, like the major deluxe package, the kickback is like $58. That's a lot. But I just, I don't feel comfortable doing something like that because I look through this list of things that I can just sign up for that they don't have to approach me. And none of the stuff is stuff that I use or, that seems really relevant to this channel. And so that's why I chose these Amazon affiliate links because like I said, it's all stuff that I either use or I wish I had. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, we also did a time machine video where we went back in time and I watched some of my first Disney World videos. And these comments are about that video. The first one's from Connie Johnson. Hi, Connie. Connie writes, there's a comment, or there's a comment you don't hear every day. It's so pretty by that bathroom. Great video, Morgan. Uh, there is a bathroom in the Magic Kingdom at Disney World in Florida that was redone a couple years ago. Well, well, like 10 years ago now. And the outside of it is so pretty at night. It's themed like that scene in Tangled where they're out in the boat. So there's like light up lanterns all over in the air and it's just so, it really is a pretty bathroom. And I'm sure that a lot of people who go to Disney, I'm sure that they also call it the pretty bathroom. Do you guys call it the pretty bathroom? Next comment is from Lynn Roberts. Hi Lynn. Lynn writes, it must be a thing looking at old holiday vids and photos, probably because we're all like caged animals. And then there's a, 
a mask emoji. I've been looking at last year's Baltic cruise. So fun when you find another YouTube channel who was on the same cruise and tours as us. Do you mean me? Were we on the same cruise? I don't think I did a Baltic cruise last year, did I? Let me know what you mean, Lynn. Thanks for the nostalgia. We have just joined your lockdown here in the UK. It's my lockdown, our lockdown. I think a lot of people are on lockdown. So I guess we will all be looking at past vids for the foreseeable dot dot dot. Stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe too. And yeah, if you don't know it, uh, we are back on like a mini lockdown here. I went and played tennis today. That's something that's still allowed outside. It was 42 degrees, by the way. If you're quick, you can still see it on my Instagram story, me talking about it. Well, that didn't go well. Restaurants are closed again. Bars are closed again. Um, we are restricted about how many people we can visit or how many people can be together. And I'm sure it's like that in other countries as well. So if you're, if you're watching this on lockdown, I'm glad I could entertain you and distract you a little bit. That makes me happy when I can do that. Final comment is from Doug Wheeler. And I told Doug that I would be answering this on this video. So he's been looking forward to this for a week now. So in this video, you say a couple of times that they don't do something anymore, but you never explain why. One thing you said was they shut down a certain ride and it will never open again. But why? He writes in <laughs> capital letters. And then you said that they don't do the fireworks show anymore. But why? Uh, I love these videos of yours, but I'm left hanging as to why they don't do whatever it is they don't do anymore. Know what I mean? And Doug, thank you for pointing that out. Here's the reason why I haven't done it up until now or why I don't do it very often. And that's because I forget that a lot of you watch these videos to, yeah, to be entertained and informed. And that's something that I guess I sometimes forget about. You know, I spend a lot of time watching YouTube videos. I watch like Mickey Views and Disney Food Blog and I read Screamscape.com on the internet. And so I know about all these things and a lot of times I just assume, well, if these are Disney fans watching this video, they know that already. They know why it's closed. And I guess what I'm trying to say is sometimes I forget that there's people out there who don't do all that. They watch my videos and if they don't get the information from me, then they don't get it. So just to go back there, uh, the one roller coaster that they closed, I there's several different theories about it. One thing is, is it's kind of old. It's a very low capacity ride and hard to maintain, I think. And also, I think another thing is just like staffing and all that. They just decided it's not a popular ride. It's hard to get people on and off of it. It's hard to repair and it's just loud and ugly to tell you the truth. So that's the reason. And the reason they're not doing any fireworks at the moment is to uh, limit crowds. They don't want people to, you know, crowd together to get the best spot. So that's why there's no fireworks at Disney at the moment. And now you've got your questions answered a week later. And I will try to be a little bit more uh, receptive to those things to remember that not everybody knows everything that I know. It sounds really bad when I say it that way, but I hope you guys know what I mean. Thanks for hanging out with me this Sunday or whenever you're watching this. And thank you so much if you've watched until now and haven't clicked away for the five minutes that I was talking about the sponsorship and the Amazon affiliate links. Remember, Christmas comes up always faster than you think. So take a look at those links, see if there's anything that you might be interested in. And I will continue posting videos here for free on YouTube. And remember, starting maybe Tuesday, it's gonna be the week of Disney and there's gonna be at least four videos from Disneyland Paris going online. See you then. It was the fourth Disney resort to magically come into existence after Disneyland California, Walt Disney World in Florida, and the Tokyo Disney Resort in Springfield, Illinois. Now called Disneyland Paris, the resort is home to six on-site hotels, the Disney Village Shopping and Dining Area, Disneyland Park, and Walt Disney Studios Paris.